Gang, 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 what's the deal, cuz? It's shot number one YouTuber, number one hood nigga, Big Nina Boy, and I'm back cracking with another Tales from the Streets reaction. And today we got up, man, we got 18 year old couple are homeless and addicted. Wow. Shot by Tales from the Streets. This is just a reaction. Now let's go. Alright, so I'm here with Monique and Darius. Yeah. Monique and Darius, how old are you guys? I'm 18. 18? Yeah. 18. You're 19? Mm -hmm. And are you guys originally from Arizona? Yeah. Yeah. I was born on um, 23rd Indian School. Yeah. All right, off the backboard though, man. We talking about an 18 year old and a 19 year old, man. Come on, it's teenagers. You understand what I'm saying? Hey, this game is heavy, homie. It is heavy. I'm gonna try to watch these teenagers, homie, and really like drop y'all opinions in the comment section and let me know what y'all think. Let's go. Mm. Yeah, I was born here, born and raised here. And are you guys homeless right now? Yeah, currently. Yeah. Darius, how did you end up homeless? Um, I started doing pills, and my auntie, while well, I was at homeless, I got her to a group home, and then my auntie let me stay with her, and the plan was I was supposed to get a job and everything, but I didn't, well, I did, I had a job the next day, but I messed it up by smoking pills, and um, my auntie kicked me out because... I was going pills, and you know, she has kids in the house too, so like, you know, she ain't like that. And so, I just left. I mean, she gave me like chances and everything, but one night I fucked it up, and then she just told me like I had to go, you know, so I left. And it was like 4 o'clock in the morning, too. So, I was home, and so now I've been out here for two years, and I've been doing um, pills for two years. And what about you, Mumi? What was the question, my bad? Um, how did we end up homeless? How did you end up homeless? Um, how is it? Me too, started smoking pills. Well, I started when I was 17, but like, the ending of fucking December, my birthday is in January. But I fucking, um, Um, I started smoking pills in, like, June, but then I didn't get too heavy on it until, I would say, like, a month later, and I fucking, right there, when I, like, when I started, like, the first time I heard it, man, it sucked, it fucked, it sucks, it feels like you can't fucking, you can't do nothing, you're just, right there, sitting down, spazzing your back, hurts, so, right there, and then I knew, like, fuck, like, I'm gonna need these pills, you know, and... So like I, I like I got clean a couple of times, but like I just sat at the house, you know, getting clean for like three days, and I was good, you know. But for some reason, I always I always went back, you know. Um, when I hit eighteen, I fucking I never got kicked out actually. Like, so she was doing these drugs at seventeen years old, and it looked like the longest she stayed clean was three days, and she been doing it for like a couple years now. Let me tell y'all something, man. Hey, man. All it takes is one time, man. You might not never come back, though. All right, let's check it out, though. I had got out of jail. And fucking, um, right there, like, I went home and my uncles, like, they were not talking to me, like, at all. And, like, I knew, like, right there and then, like, damn, like, they're dead on my bullshit. Like, they don't want to, like, they're fucking, they're fed up, you know? And I walked in the house and nothing from them, you know? So I knew right there that they're down, like, they don't want to talk to me, like, so I asked my dad to pick me up one night, and like this was around January eighth, and I ever since I like ever since I took my dad to pick me up, I never went home, and fucking I stayed out here with him, and um, my birthday was my birthday January twenty second, so fucking I was already eighteen, you know, I was already legal to be out here, and ever since then, like I just never went back home. I stayed out here, and that's how. And how did you guys get introduced to the pills? Uh, my, my, my youngest brother. Yeah, um, I was at the group home at the time, and, and um, 
Yeah. I was just in the house, you know, just minding my own business with the kids. And he, I guess he came and my auntie already had kicked them out, you know, because he was doing those and he was doing those in the house, you know, with the kids in there. So he got kicked out. And then, but there'll be times where he came and he, he, he came to me and he told me, he's like, hey, try this real quick, you know? So I tried it. And like, ever since then, like, I just, I haven't, you know, I haven't stopped. Like, I got clean one time, but I think like two times, but I, I went back to it. Cause you know, like I was hurting and stuff. Yeah. And Monique, who introduced you to them? Well, when I first tried it, I did it by myself. But when he first got on it, I had broke up with him for like four or five months. Like for four months, I broke up with him. And then I don't know, something like, something just like brought us back together. Or he had called me one day and we had chilled. And supposedly right there and then he got clean, like he has been clean and stuff. And um, we had got a hotel, right? And then... Low key, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, man, like, she trying to protect him, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you could just, you get a vibe, like, you know, he the one that told her to try that, you know what I'm saying? And got her hooked on that. I might be wrong, but just my opinion. Let's go. And then we had got a hotel and fucking, um, and then he was like, my uncle, like, he wouldn't, like, really let me out the house and shit like that, you know? So fucking, um, I would like sneak out and I would go see him. And when we had got a hotel and it was like in the morning and uh, he fucking, he knew like I couldn't be out here and shit cause I had school. And um, I had told my uncle, I think I had told my uncle like, here, um, when I got out of school, I think I told him, hey like, um, I'm gonna go and try it. I'm gonna go, I don't know, I told him something that I was gonna stay at the court. No, 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 picked me up, his auntie had picked me up around, like, 12, right, and I tried calling him, and I was, like, tried calling him, and I was going to tell him that I was going to go over there to go bring him food and stuff, but he was not answering my call or nothing, so I was, like, like, what the hell, like, why is he not answering my call, so then I ended up going over there, so he didn't know I was going, you know, but I was going to the hotel to go see what's up and to bring him the food. And I fucking, like, he was answering the door or nothing. And so I made the fucking, um, the clean lady open the door. And he opened the door and fucking, um, he had opened the door. They had opened the door. And he was right there. As I got going more closer, fucking pills are in his hand, foils on the fucking floor. And, like, just, like, smelled in there and just like his face looked like fucking OD but he was just fucking high so like nodded out and I'm like what the fuck like what are you doing and he just got up and looked at me and his auntie and just like you know I was surprised and shit and right there like that fucking traumatized the fuck out of me cause like me like I'm a big butt smoker like that's all we used to do we just used to smoke butt and shit and like, when I seen that like that shit traumatized the fuck out of me like I couldn't stop thinking about it like it just, like, it was stuck in my fucking head. So then, um, a couple years later, I had, um, I had asked the blood to bring me a pill. And, um, I had, like, I already knew, like, how to do it and stuff like that because I see people out here, you know? And, like, I tried it, and ever since then, like, I just been on them. And I wasn't with him or nothing. I was by myself. But when I had seen that in the hotel, I had broke up with him. And then I experienced this by, like, through our breakup. And then, like, once I started, that first time I just started buying them, like, if it was just fucking bud, you know? And then I got back with him, and that's when we started doing them together. Yeah. That's how I said it. So, have you guys been through an overdose before? Oh, he didn't OD. He was just nodded out in the hotel fucking fussy. Yeah. It looked like he had OD, you yeah. know? I mean, I don't know. I don't know what that was. Have but... you guys ever been through an overdose? Yeah, yeah, me twice. How, how'd you make it out of there? I mean, everything was just at the right time. Like, if 
if I was still like OD and no one, you know, no one didn't find me or nothing, like, like I would have, I would have died. It. But my my sister and my brother, they, you know, I was talking with them and they noticed that like I, like I wasn't waking up or nothing, so they went went to call my aunties and my aunties called the ambulance and everything, the firefighters and. I don't know, I thought I was sleeping and I, I woke up where like my family just like surrounding me and then there was like, firefighters and I was all wet from them like trying to wake me up pouring water on me and everything like that. Dang, man, so he didn't OD twice, you know what I'm saying? You know, he was lucky he had his family right there to even watch his back, man, because if he was by himself, ain't nobody came to his rescue, man, he would have been flatlined out here somewhere stanking, man. Man, y'all pay attention, homie. Yeah, man, let's go. That experience didn't, like, scare you enough to stop the... Oh, yeah, it did. Like, I did for, like, two days, but... You know, I was just like, you know, like it was just a, it was just a bad pain, you know, like, like I was just thinking like, oh man, like that motherfucker just, like, it was just, it was weird too when we we're doing the transaction with him, you know, he, like he was telling us like, not to like, you know, not to like hit it like too big or you know, not to like keep taking hits and shit like that. And it was weird because you know when you usually buy shit from people out here like they don't, they don't tell you that, you know. Yeah. I thought something was weird, but. You know, like, I thought it was good, and I just kept, I kept taking the hits, and then I just fell asleep, and I all deep. Damn, that's yeah. crazy, man. And what do you guys do to get money out here? Like, what do you guys do to survive? Oh, to be honest, um, we, we don't pan or nothing, but I do, I do something else. I, um, um. Uh, you know, legal stuff. Huh? Legal yeah, stuff. it's illegal stuff. You know, it's not nothing bad. Like you know, like killing or anything like that. You know. Yeah. yeah. And do both of your family members know that you guys are out here right now? Yeah. They know about your guys' situation. Yeah. What do they think about it? What do they tell you guys? Oh um, man. Yeah. What y'all think, man? You know what I'm saying? You think he got her out there? You know what I'm saying? Or you think she getting down doing the little thing he doing? Y'all drop it in the comments. Let me know. My auntie, she, you know, she worries about me and everything. But usually I kind of see her, like, kind of sometimes, like, mostly kind of every day. Sometimes. And, you know, she helps me and everything like that. You know, she gives me money and everything. But she just, like, she... Whenever I'm done being out here and everything, she wants me to go to her, you know? And then, like, I could just, like, I'll stay with her, and, but I gotta be clean, you know? But she still helps me while, while I'm out here. You know, she, she doesn't judge me or nothing over, like, what well, I wanna spend my life on, you know? Yeah, she, she like that. And Monique, what does your family tell you? When I talk to my mom, she always tells me, are you ready to clean? Have you thought about it? Is it coming soon? Every time I talk to her now, she just always tells me, like, am I ready to get clean? When am I going to get clean? She wants me home. But yeah, yeah I still see them. And they still, not really much to more, because my mom had told me, like, She's tired of seeing me out here because I like different. Like when I first came out here, I was 190, and like now I'm like 108, and I like different, you know. And like, yeah, man, that is man, it's crazy because she 18 years old. She was getting down off this when she was 17, and you know, I don't know if he is the reason why, you know what I'm saying, he got her on it, but she's saying she did it on her own, man. But catch this though, man, they teenagers, homie. You know what I'm saying? For a mama to say she tired of seeing her, it sound like they giving up. Man, I know mine's. Ah, oh, man, it'd be World War Four around here. Man, I'm out there with you every... I'm following you. You understand? I'm following mine's. You ain't... I'm smacking it like smack, smack. You ain't putting that up in you, man. That's out. I wish I would. All right, let's go, man. I still see them and stuff like that, but just not as much, you know, 
I don't really like to call them anymore, you know. But if I do, she'll come out here and bring me something to eat. She won't really throw me money as much anymore because she knows, like, what I'm going to spend it on, you know. But she buys me clothes. She brings me stuff to eat, you know. She, we go do stuff just to take me out the sun. How how do parents know if their kids are experimenting with these blues? What are the some of the early signs that your kids might be experimenting with blues? Hmm. I'd say I'd say uh, I'd say if, like you like say if it's your son or anything if he's like if he's leaving constantly. and if he's leaving constantly like like every like every day or like or like or he just tells his mom like hey mom like I'm gonna go outside just like keeps leaving going outside going outside you know like and every thirty to twenty minutes yeah if his if their fucking stuff starts to go missing expensive yeah expensive clothes, stuff yeah. shoes. Anything you could try to sell to make money. Um, that's one. That's one. That's that's a really big one. Yeah. I know. What is what is something that a parent can do once they notice that their kids are starting to do blues? What can they do to help them try to get out of it? Just. Kind of depends, cause everybody has a story, you know. Like people, people do blues because they're hurt, you know. Some people want to do it just because they're numb. They want to feel numb, you know. Uh, you know, just like talk to them, you know. You just gotta talk to them, talk them out of it. Like tell them what's like, you know, like what's bothering, like why they want to do it, you know. And just. What do you guys think about tough love? You guys think that it works, like kicking them out? No, no, no. Yeah, it, tough really love like that. It's, it's more, it's more like, pushing them to the drink. Yeah, you're just like you just, you're just basically just like you know, just like you want to do pills? helping them. You're basically helping them get pills, you know. And that's just like like that ain't love like that. That ain't love. Love is just like having them stay, trying to get them something to eat, you know. Oh, no, no, no. What up, homie? Good to see you too, man. Hey, I actually got a job. Yeah, yeah that's I good. I just started working today, man. Yeah? Where at? Oh, yeah. oh all right, man. All right, y'all, that's the end of that motherfucking reaction. Go watch the full video at Tales from the Streets, man. An 18 year old couple are homeless and addicted to blues. Let's go.